Hey guys, you're watching one and only. My name is AJ. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build a Zoo. And today is sort of a bit of a sad day because it's going to show us how close we really are to completing our Minecraft Zoo. We've only got, uh, I think I've got one more animal left on the list, which is polar bears, which will be next episode. I'm sure there's probably a couple at least of eggs that I missed that we could add. I don't want to add like dinosaurs and uh, skeleton masters and those kind of weird things. Uh, there must be some normal animals left that we haven't got to try and sort of fill out maybe some of the smaller spaces. But to be honest with you, there really isn't much left. I do, however, like how lucky we are in a way because unintentionally we have pretty much got a nice square uh, area here. Uh, there, you know, there's a chunk missing from this corner here. Uh, there is a road that comes out from this point. You can see my mouse good. Uh, from here, so we could sort of loop a path around here and back into this section. If we had, like, you'd want three, probably, three animals. One, two, three. And then it would really square this off. This part in the middle here has no access to paths. You could add one through the trees, but I don't think it's really necessary. I like how the path layout uh, currently goes. And it's quite funny. Uh, I did not know, uh, but with some of these uh, animal mods that we've got, it actually makes certain random things uh, spawn. Like, you know how in vanilla Minecraft, you've got, like, villagers or temples that just randomly spawn in your seed. Well, apparently, just a little bit beyond the uh, the dome, the uh, uh, sea life center, is a weird, what I think is a grave. <laughs> I'm sure it's a grave and then there's a couple more over here as well and just a random staircase now I loaded up uh, uh, Using this profile the Zeus profile. I just loaded up a random seed uh, like a survival seed and These were all over the place. These were very very common spawns as you can see in this area alone We've had three of them within the area of the zoo and these random staircases spawned as well It doesn't go anywhere. It's just a staircase and it's quite funny as well I have no idea how but overviewer works by rendering chunks that you've been in or that have been rendered in the game so when you when you you know load up the game and you look out into the distance you can see how far you've uh, you know you, your chunk render distance and then overview can actually load up those chunks in the game But anything beyond that all of this black space is Places that you haven't been that the game hasn't loaded yet. However There's there's this area nearly a perfect square nearly a perfect square Completely loaded with nothing in it about the size, well, it's bigger than the whole zoo. I suppose bigger than the whole zoo rendered. I, <laughs> what? Why is that there? Unless there's a boss there, mind you, it wouldn't. It wouldn't need that much room. It wouldn't need more room than the zoo, would it? Anyway, uh, looking through this quickly, we've got the entrance here. I want a nice car park, at least sort of this big, added to it. We want a wall going all the way around. We've pretty much worked out like how our sections of wall are going to go. All we need to do is add some sort of corner piece uh, to allow us to sort of bend out and around certain parts and like follow the contour of the zoo. The wall's going to work really well because it's going to hold in sort of our zoo and sort of, you know, wall in. So when you're on the inside, you don't have just empty, super flat world uh, in the distance. Uh, and yeah, it'll just sort of let you know how close you are to the wall. It'll look really nice But with a car park out the front, we don't need to worry too much on the car park I mean, it's not really exactly the most important part of a build is it? but it would be nice uh, to have it there We do have a space here. It's a little bit of an awkward shaped space uh, because of uh, This sort of little tooth that sticks out you could we could round this off with and fill all of that in with bricks and put an enclosure in there. Possibly, uh, we have a space not big enough for anything here, so that'll just be nice uh, and decorative. Uh, here, I would like to add the polar bears, uh, which is the next one or the last animal that I actually have on the list. These three spots here, or four, if you include the one that we can't can't see behind the cafe sign. 
Just going to have a couple of trees in. Uh, nice to dress up. Maybe even a little pond or a little waterfall. This area looks fantastic. I really like the sort of little water area. I can imagine some fish in there. You know, some big kois and stuff like that. Uh, and then we've got some little teasing up to do here. So, you know, some decorating to do around this area. And here... And that's all of the spaces filled. That's like it. And then any space that we have uh, remaining until we get to the wall. But that's just bone meal and trees. And we might go with some like pink trees like we have at the entrance. Or maybe some orange ones or some, you know, other sort of uh, colours. But sort of somewhat realistic looking. Uh, we've got the toilets and the gift shop. Uh, we've got the monkeys over here. Uh, we've got the butterfly tent here that has, I've just noticed, two leaf blocks sticking through the glass. We can remove those. <laughs> it looks really nice. I'm so loving the uh, uh, Sea Life Center as well. It looks, it, it's such a cool shape, isn't it? It's a circle, but it's sort of just below midway. Uh, so it gives this dome effect instead i'm very very happy with that the penguin enclosure is actually my favorite looking in overviewer uh, i just really like how the glass bridge looks in it uh, very very nice it's quite funny whatever blocks we've used here um, i don't know what we've used there um, but apparently they're purple blocks um <laughs> but in the game they certainly don't look like purple blocks we must have retextured them we textured them into something, but the game uh, doesn't recognize it. And I see at the back here, we've got, well, well, a couple of holes that we need to fill to really finish off that rock. Got a little random bit of stone here uh, and some grass. That just needs a little bit of tidying up, but that's not a problem. Giraffes, bison and ox, the gorillas, uh, armadillos. We've got some crabs and some sea stuff out the front of the beach. Obviously, all the sharks and the dolphins are in the um, sea life center. We've got the rhinos here. We've got the raccoons here. Uh, this is pandas. We relocated the pandas, wasn't it, last episode? Uh, lions. Yeah, lions in there. Uh, this is... It has no roof. Um, oh, what, what are they? The Komodo dragons. It does have a roof on it, but obviously it doesn't actually pick the blocks up in the game. Uh, apparently because they are modded blocks and Overviewer can only sort of pick up vanilla blocks. Which is why, you know, these purple... And there, are, there was another block that I saw that looked a little bit odd. Uh, beautiful river that runs through. However, this part of the river, I've totally forgotten about. We actually, in a video, done all of this part of the river. You know, with sugarcane and long grass and stuff like that. Uh, beautified it all up with some rocks on either side. And then I said I'll do this side off camera, but I totally forgot. Whoops, so that needs to be done uh, around here. It's not that important, but uh, it's it, it, it always, like, I always know. We've got elephants here. We're very close to sort of the uh, start here again. Uh, what's in this one? Snow. That one has... Is it tigers in that one? I'm pretty sure it's tigers in that one. What's next to the tigers? We've got... Bice... Oh, no, it's bison in this one, ox in that one. I'm pretty sure that's that's how we done it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's ox. Uh, I've got a pretty good memory. It's, I'm not doing too bad. I don't have the best memory in the world, but sort of going through without seeing the animals. Uh, zebras over here. Uh, into the farm area, we've got, like, ducks, um, boars, can uh, not kangaroos. Kangaroos, we don't have those. That's an animal we should have. I've never seen a kangaroo in Minecraft, though. I don't think it's there. Um, camels, I was meant to say. Turkeys, goats, uh, ostriches, crocodiles and alligators, horses, foxes. Uh... What's that one? Ah, panthers. That's it. Panthers. Uh, all the birds, all the different birds there. And I think that's all of the animals, crazily enough. Wow. Oh, and bears. I don't think I said bears, but eh, bears. All right. Uh, let's jump into Minecraft and take a quick look around. It's episode 50, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's a little bit late to mention now, 10 minutes into the video. But every 25 episodes in any creative series, I like to go through and do a little bit of a world tour. Uh, refresh people's minds that have been subscribed for a little while or been watching the series, what we've already done. So if they've got suggestions, they're not repeating things that have already been done. And it's also beneficial for new subscribers uh, and viewers to be able to catch up to a point that we are actually on now. So when we continue forwards, they know what's already been built and have a good idea on the layout of things. Let's jump into Minecraft and have a closer look. 
All right, so here we are inside of the zoo. Everything's all loading in. I love how Minecraft does that. Um, for those of you that are new and interested, the texture pack that we're using is the John Smith's Legacy Texture Pack, uh, 32 by 32 bit. Uh, pretty much unedited. I can't think of an actual block that we've changed the texture of in this series. We usually, in most of our other series, change blocks because either we don't like them or we found a better use for them. Uh, but the only thing that we've changed in this texture pack is the paintings. We've reused the paintings for like Don't Feed the Animal signs, staff only signs, toilet directions, uh, things like that. But I can't remember using it for any other block or changing any other block. So apart from the, uh, the paintings, it's an unedited version of John Smith's Legacy Pack. And... The shader pack is Seuss uh, Ultra Shaders. Uh, they work beautifully for outsiders. The shaders that I use on every hiccups on every one of my series. They're not the greatest for insides, for interiors. Uh, you will get a different uh, shader pack for that uh, if possible. But uh, it works great. It's beautiful for outsides. Even got our signs out the front for the Zono Zoo. I like that. That was one of my proudest moments when I made that sign, uh, when I made that painting. Um, if we pop through here, we've got a couple of little mascots, an elephant guy and uh, a cow guy. I know a cow isn't a zoo animal, but we had no other <coughs> no other dress-up uniforms for our uh, <laughs> mascots to wear. Um, the place that we always wanted to draw attention to was the elephants. It was the first enclosure that we ever done, I think, even on episode one. It might be in episode two, episode one or something. We might have worked on the front gate or something like that. No, I think episode one we did work on the elephants and then we went to the gates. Uh, I really like these. They're, they're my favourite model. I like how their little ears sort of waggle. Um, they work really, really well. Sometimes they all clump up at the corner here, uh, but then they do spread out, so it's not so bad. Some of the animals actually have really good uh, AI, uh, like movement AI. Some of them not so much. Some of them, like the ostriches here, uh, and like I said with the elephants, uh, seem to clump. <laughs> hey there, Mwah. seem to clump up in one area. Uh, some of them get stuck in water uh, and things like that. Uh, but then some of them have phenomenal AI. And that's like the zebras will actually move away from you if you get near them. Like they don't like you uh, too close to them. We've got turkeys in here. We do have a problem with these guys escaping. I think we've got a couple left. I don't know where they're escaping from. I think it's when they get like in a place like that. And then we log out of the world and log back in. It pops them through the fence. I think is the sort of thing that happens. I don't really know how Minecraft works like in depth. But uh, yeah. We've got some camels over here. Two different uh, types of camels from two different mods. They look awesome. Um, and we've got... so. Oh, I forgot about this on the overview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deers. I think we've got a couple of deers and the rain deers as well. Um, but yeah, they look really nice. Really nice uh, model. I'm also very impressed with the sounds of the animals. Uh, they, whoever made these, I can't remember uh, the, the the mod makers. I've got like lots of mobs and a couple of other mods. Uh, but I can't remember who made them. But they put a lot of effort into the sounds. I know that. This is the foxes that I think we built last episode. Um, we've got the panthers over here. They look really nice. They've got a really nice sound to them uh, as well. And I don't know if panthers had blue eyes. Uh, I've never looked at a panther up close, strangely enough. <laughs> but uh, those ones have blue eyes and they look really nice. We've got the crocodiles and alligators in here. Um, these three models all look the same. I wonder if the other type of... Let's head down the bottom. I wonder if the other type have despawned. We've had some trouble over the course of the series of some animals, for some reason, for whatever reason, despawning. Some, only when you get like 10 blocks away from the mob, they'll actually despawn. That's what happens with most of the birds. Um, and some, you know, if you go like the normal out of render distance to come back. That must have happened with the crocodiles here. Uh, but we did install a NBT edit mod to solve this and it's been working really well. So we can just hover over an animal and type slash NBT edit. Oops, maybe one word. There we go. Uh, and then we get into like the brain of the mob and it allows us to change absolutely anything. We might even be able to force it back to a baby <laughs> on this. 
um and and you could change anything about you know health and fire damage and stuff like that but more importantly for us uh we can make him uh is it persistent that's it persistence here uh it's on zero at the moment which apparent which means he can despawn uh, all the ones with zero or well, most of the ones in the zoo have zero and they never have but if we edited that to number one instead that means that he will never despawn no matter sort of how far away you go uh, from this zoo he will always be there the resident crocodile Komodo dragons, I really like this. We've got this sort of fence panel here, which inhibits view a little bit. So we put in a nice big glass viewing panel to be able to see him. Really like that. Really nice. I had some funny stories about Komodo dragons on that video that I talked about as well. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you go and watch that video because it talks about how we were going to get Komodo dragons in our house and stuff like that. Reindeer's here. Always beautiful. It's not Christmas anymore, but it's always beautiful. Uh, pandas, we relocated these. These were over the other side of the map quite recently. Uh, but they were a little bit out of the way with nothing around them. So I felt bad for them. So I've decided to bring them right into the heart of the zoo. Pretty much in the middle here. Uh, because everybody loved pandas, right? Who don't love pandas? Everyone loved pandas. Uh, the uh, lions in here as well. This is what I was talking about with the signs. Please do not feed the animals. They may bite. And uh, it's not bad for a 32 by 32 bit texture pack. I was actually surprised that we could make readable text. You know, from that side all the way to this side is only 32 pixels. Uh, so it's a little bit of a push to do like um, like text in, in, in a uh, number that small. But it's definitely a lot easier than, uh, than 16 by 16 which is what it is by default, default texture pack. You can't do any text or anything like that, which is why the paintings in Vanilla Minecraft are very sort of blocky and Minecrafty and pixelated, because they're very limited. This is the Harambe enclosure, or the <laughs> monkey, uh, gorilla, not monkey, it's gorilla enclosure. We've got a monkey enclosure over the other side of the park. Uh, we've got these monkey, or gorillas, sorry, in here, uh, that don't have any AI, it seems. They jump about, and that's about it, and they scream, and it's really loud. Uh, but we do have these ones as well, which do have an AI. Uh, they're like silverback gorilla sort of mod. They're very excited, which is quite realistic for these gorillas. You know, gorillas in real life, they sort of jump and they roll about and, you know, bang in their chest and stuff like that. So uh, these work really well. Oh, they're all having a bath. We actually get fish spawn in this pond. I've seen multiple fish in here um, before. I... It's not deep enough for squids, but we do get, like, normal fish spawn in here sometimes. Same with the river, actually, down uh, that goes through the entire zoo. There is a, a fish always spawning in here. I bet if I go here, though, we won't see a single one. But there are always fish spawning in here. Nope. Not even a nibble. Pokemon reference. We've got the uh, ox over here. Uh, musk ox. Uh, put them in a nice sort of snow environment here. I think it's sort of suited uh, their very woolly look. Hey, there, little guy. They look so derpy. They're like the sheep of my, uh, the, like the vanilla sheep. How their eyes just look totally whacked out. Um, woo! Hello, giant white thing. We've got zebras over here. These are what I'm talking about with the uh, with the really cool AI. These would actually like move away from you. They're a little bit nervous creatures, uh, but it makes herding them amazing. Like we can actually herd our uh, our zebras without touching them you don't have to lead them or anything like that they'll just move away from you so yeah look get in the barn it's so cool i really like that butterfly tent was one of the first things that we done uh, i still don't have working doors on here though we need to do that uh, i want like redstone automatic doors on them uh, and inside here was a lot fuller i think a lot of them seem to clump out towards the back um, that was sort of something that was happening, but I think we've been working away from here for so long that they have actually despawned. It wouldn't surprise me because Minecraft mobs uh, can only uh, or, or will not spawn if they can't move more than 20 blocks, I think, in any direction. And this is clearly bigger than 20 blocks in diameter. Oh man, hiccups. They stayed forever, like for ages, uh, all the, the birds and the butterflies in here. Um, but I did know that eventually they would despawn and it looks like they have. It's not a problem though because I can just spawn them in uh, with 
you know the persistent uh, MVT data in order to force them uh, to not disappear on me uh, and we'll, then we'll always have them we do have some around the outside here as well which haven't despawned because obviously there isn't enough room uh, snails in here and there's like little pathways that lead to each each area nice little bridge that goes with a waterfall coming from the ceiling i know it's a little bit weird having water coming from nowhere but that's exactly what it like was like in a butterfly tent in at a zoo that i went to relatively recently oh there are some birds in here i can hear another one over there somewhere that's that one i can hear that in my headphones but there's one over there somewhere i don't know where anything in this one oh yeah yeah the cockroach cockroaches uh in that one We've got uh, oh, some fireflies and some normal flies about as well. I think this one had f frogs in, but I don't think they've actually uh, been in there for a while. Oh, there are still some stuff in here. Mostly like the little bees and stuff like that. Oh, there's a butterfly too. Well, that's good. We can now call this an official butterfly tent. Is that a dragonfly there as well? Yeah, and a dragonfly. They got like this really uh, low frequency hum noise. Um, that really gets in my ear hole. Oh, geckos in there. It almost like hurts my ears if I have my headphones turned up um, too much. Like I can actually like hear the snakes in here. Really, really cool mobs. They are. They've got a really awesome movement as well when they uh, when they crawl along the ground. Another type of gecko in here. The sort of camouflaged gecko uh, instead of the sort of sand uh, desert style. This one. I can't remember what was in this one. It was something that required like a tropically sort of theme. But I can't remember what. And then we can come back out and use the door. Okay, wonderful. Uh, what else? I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that I've missed. Uh, oh, monkeys we can do. There's a load of stuff here with the far side that I've missed. I'll try and cover it all as quickly as I can. But it is quite a big zoo. You know, we're, we're over 20 minutes now, including the overviewer section. So uh, we need to be a little bit careful. Monkeys, these always clump up over on this side. Got a really cool sort of model going on here. <laughs> and, oh, and there's one at the top there! What's he standing on? Oh, you see, he's just... Ooh, you're floating, technically. You're right on the edge of a block. But yeah, they climb up the top here. I'm so glad that they actually use that and, and, and spiral up. And we're using these sort of uh, slabs to look like little ropes. Uh, hanging between stuff seen them uh, plenty of times uh, up on there Let's go back over to uh, This side Yeah, we've just got a few more on that side bears. Oh, we didn't we didn't do this side. Let's do this side first and then we'll loop back round uh, Again, we've got the giraffes with a, a really cool sort of viewing platform here uh, We've got these uh, bridge that goes over the river that I, I sort of went through looking for fish earlier it also comes under this bridge, uh, under that one, and down into the waterfall, or, or transforms into the waterfall uh, for the gorilla, for the Harambe enclosure, which is really, really cool. Incorporating it all in. A little bit laggy over this. I don't know what it must be something to do with the lighting. Giraffes in here. Uh, we made the platform so we can actually get to sort of giraffe head height. Um, I think most zoos have something like this uh, at the sort of bigger or taller animals like giraffes. I know Banham Zoo, which is the zoo that I live sort of closest to uh, and I've been to most recently, uh, had a exactly sort of T-junction similar uh, uh, platform that allowed you to get up nice and high next to them. And they were really friendly to it, that zoo. They actually came right up to you. Um, Almost within touching distance, really close to within touching distance. Uh, here, are the bison over this side. So very much like the oxes, but like a uh, like the summer ox. I'm gonna call it. That's totally wrong. Like totally incorrect. But I'm gonna call it like the summer ox. Penguin enclosure is one of my favourite enclosures out of them all. Um, we went through like three different penguins. I think we've got three different. Yeah, one two three different types of penguin spawn eggs one of them was like it had its arms stuck out uh which i which we were sort of okay with but not 100 happy with uh the other one i can't remember but obviously we didn't like it because we took it out oh yeah uh, it was blue that's it they're the ones with the arms sticking out we still got those ones in we removed the blue ones but then this is our favorite one they've got a really nice sort of pingu waddle um 
movement. And they've got a better sound than the little ones. The little ones are like that one that you can hear that's going, meh, 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 meh. Uh, but they were, uh, those penguins actually have a little bit of a better sound. We decided to keep both of them in, though, to keep to have sort of two different heights uh, of penguins going on. We can also go down and underneath this enclosure into sort of uh, a little bit of a dark area because of the shaders. Uh, but it allows us to sort of see the water. So when the penguins do their diving and stuff like that, uh, we can sort of see them from down here. Really cool, like a like an underground aquarium style thing going on. Let's hop over to the bears super quickly. Hey there, these are the brown bears. Uh, we've got both brown and black bears in here. Originally I was going to have two different enclosures, but what's the point? They're pretty much the same. Went with a very stony environment. I know trees like, like, um, I know trees like bears though. I know bears like trees and stuff, uh, but they are also sort of the mountainy style bears. And I wanted that sort of for our inspiration for this enclosure. So it's very rocky, very stony. And they have a cave that they can actually go into, uh, you know, as shelter, which is really cool. Like actual bear cave, uh, uh, jungle book style. Uh, we've got the armadillos over here. Um, one of the most awesome animals, I suppose, that you could ever have. An armadillo is just even such a good word. Uh, over here, we've got the turtles. Hey, little turtles and crabs going on. We do have, or we did have, uh, some large Hermit, her, I said hermit crabs. Uh, they are actually quite big, uh, but uh, I think they didn't despawn. I think they all actually got out. And whenever an animal gets out, I punish it by slaughtering it. And I think we've, <laughs> we've ran out of them now, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, turtles are really funny as well. If you punch them, they fall onto their back. Uh, we've got the rhinos in here, and very similar, I don't know if it's a great idea, but very similar to the giraffes, we've got a sort of raised up platform, uh, mostly because the fences again, they work great if they're one block high, but any higher than one block, and uh, it inhibits view slightly, you know, you can still see through it, you know, you can see the eyes and the horn and stuff like that of the rhino, uh, but it's a little bit inhibiting, so putting a, a, a raised platform on here allows you to get clear views of uh of the rhinos here and a couple of little rhino sheds as well which i really like they're really simple and basic but they just they really stand out uh a little space here for uh either an enclosure or i might just decorate i might make this into a little bit of just a seating area we're very close to the food court so it would make sense and uh i think having like the five or whatever enclosures is so close to each other here these four are already pretty close i don't think it'll make too much sense but yeah in here we've got the raccoons Cute little tiny things, but um, I don't think they're the most friendliest animals in the world in real life, are they? Oh, he is so damn cute, though. The food court. Uh, some nice outside seating area with some awesome shade. I love how this looks. Wow, that looks really terrible under there, though. Wow, what does that look like? It's like really weird, like reflections and stuff going on. Maybe some anti-aliasing. It's fine, like, over this side, but not over there. Weird. A uh, wonderful fountain as well as a sort of centerpiece and then we've got this sort of sort of maze or decorative sort of uh, giant pond here uh, at the back of the food court just to give you a little bit of a wander around look at the fish in the water let your food go down maybe while you know the rest of the family's eating you can sort of go and have a look uh, around there we do have random bats that fly about I don't know where the bats came from or why the bats spawn I'm sure in vanilla minecraft bats don't spawn outside naturally they only spawn inside caves naturally so I don't know what's going on there but there's nothing really I can do about it uh, whoop, another white flash. Uh, cafe. Oh, no, that's not the cafe. That's the toilets. Uh, another set of toilets. We had one at the entrance as well, but here's another set. Uh, cafe hasn't got an interior yet, but the food court does. They're going to be very similar in interior anyway. We went with a greeny, sort of brownie inspired uh, jungle almost uh, feel in here with a really nice ceiling going on. Uh, I really like the chairs and the tables inspired from some, some Facebook posts that I got sent in. Uh, we've got. Uh, cake and a sort of dessert tray going on here that you could choose and a bit of a menu above a little bit of a fast food inspired thing the cafe is more for like the tea cakes and the coffees and stuff like that this is more for like you know uh sausage and chips for the kids and stuff like that or burgers and stuff like that you always get this kind of place Looks really really nice got some brewing stuff and it has a fully fitted kitchen too Ta -da! fridges everything Wonderful. Anything else that I've missed? There might be an enclosure or two that has been skipped off the list. And if there is, I apologize uh, for that. Especially if it's your favorite animal that I've missed. Uh, but yeah, we are 
out of time. We're way over time. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, then feel free to subscribe. We shall see you in the next episode.